Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. And this is a continuation of my updated in-depth guide series, Ronto Water. Uh, and as per usual, the comment section is going to have a pinned comment that's going to have timestamps to each section of this video. So if you're looking for just the might section, precision, the healer spec, uh, DPS artifacts, supercharged testing, uh, check out that timestamp. That'll be able to take you to that, set, that direct section. Uh, these, these videos are on the longer side. It's meant to be a one-stop shop in terms of anything to do with water you can find in this video. It doesn't have footage. It has the updated relevant sections, uh, the, all the rotations that have changed, artifact specs, everything else that has changed from my previous water guide, which is also linked in the comment section, uh, you'll be able to see there. So if you have any other questions or comments, put them in the comment section below, and I'll be able to answer them as well. Thank you, and have a good day. Okay, so welcome to the might side of the guide. And uh, I don't normally focus on the style, but I uh, actually really liked how the surging uh, chroma actually worked out with these SM chests. Usually I don't like it because the materials cover the designs. But like, as you can see in like the arms, like the surging chroma, you still see like the water behind in the style. Same thing in the uh, the lines, the belt, the hands, and the back pieces there. That's the uh, from the anniversary event. I don't know. I just I really like how the surging chroma actually worked out with this style. Even the legs, you can see it moving around. So it's not actually covering it in the FOSS style. The FOSS, uh, that's the FOSS SM chest and legs. But, you know, on to the actual video topic at hand. Uh, so we can kind of get into the spec here. DPS spec is going to be the same uh, across the board with Might. Superpower spec, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, max Might and Power. Put the rest into health because uh, you are, you're, are running a melee build. And if you're choosing one of the Tetrahedron of Ungren in the future, just for the Might buff, then you've got health for that. Plus, really nothing else is beneficial for it. In terms of Iconic Powers, you need Robot Psychic and Heat Vision for the single target. Don't worry about Sonic Cry. That was just me messing around. Super Speed. You can choose to take the recoveries. Uh, you don't have to. The melee build is quite power heavy, so that's why I chose to take it for this. Dervish, don't worry about. In terms of weapons, I'm running two-handed just to troll with the Doom Spin. But uh, obviously, if you don't have the skill points, just take like one hand or something. Just put the one skill point in it so you have access to the weapon tree, and that's all you need. In terms of weapon mods, you're going to have Blast Adapter, Supercharge Call of Deep 3 in the head, Neck Mod's going to be Escalating Might, uh, Back Mod's going to be Accelerated Bubble. There's really no other back mods to run. Uh, you're only running Bubble in the uh, melee build, but. Many Wave obviously doesn't apply for DPS. Pressurize is that's the prec weapon buff. Solace of Seas is a healing power. Uh, Berserker is not going to be proccing enough. The other ones are just useless anyway. So really accelerated bubble uh, is, is helpful there. That's the only one that has a bit of synergy. Not that you're using it in every rotation. Uh, chest mod is going to be penetrating strikes. Core strength I believe is still bugged. and you don't. In, uh, if you're not running Soul Cloak, then you would need uh, extended supercharge. So if you're not running Soul Cloak, you're setting Supercharge. If you are running Soul Cloak, then run Penetrating Strikes. Leg Mod, once again, the, the, you can run Restorative Riptide if you want. It's not going to be any beneficial healing to speak about because it doesn't scale anymore. Uh, your Trinket loadout is going to be more of a personal preference. If you're running the melee build, it could be the Summer Event Trinket. That's going to do the most damage. Oh, it also offers a Might. Uh, you could run the Shadow Bat, the Dark Construct Bat, you know, Dark Robins, the Sewer Backup. Uh, for the D DPS Trinket, Orbital Supply Drop. Hand mod's going to be Max Damage. Foot mod's going to be Tumbling Master. Now, in terms of artifacts, it's going to differ on two occasions. Uh, the melee build and single target are slightly different. You're always going to have the transformation card. The transformation card is amazing for water. It really has bumped up water. Not not into the OP range at all. It's just it's, it's a big uh, increase from uh, the previous water because uh, you have all this burst damage of water, not too many dots, so you have the transformation card, especially when you're running like a Tsunami Strikes build and Depth Charge, you can see the difference there. Uh, Grenorum, you still run this because water works off the Crush PI, and it really doesn't have any powers to set up Crush. You have the Supercharge Generator, which is an awful dot. Uh, it's completely weak. Uh, you have some other powers that set up Crush, like Many Wave, or not, um, is it Striking Wave? It's the one that basically teleports you, that uh, you would be crazy to use crashing wave um, that's a ridiculous power that's not even practical to use in content that sets up crush the other one is drown uh, which is supercharged red razor so it's and that's just a really weak dot so what it does is 
I, I tested this myself as well. So if you have the PI damage and the Grim, that makes up more than what the Strategist is going to proc off. Because Water doesn't have a lot of dots. It has some dots, but not a lot. So your Strategist isn't going to be proccing as often as other power sets will, like say like Electric did. But uh, it's just not enough to justify losing the pet damage from Granorum and the PI damage. And for melee, because you're using Cola Deep often enough, you're running Scrap the Soul Cloak, just so you have that extra supercharge regen. Uh, it's not enough to run Gemini. You're not spamming uh, Cola Deep, so it's not worth it to use Gemini to get the Gemini damage from. It's just not going to happen that often. So that's why you run Soul Cloak, just because the, the easiest way to explain it here is, is look at my little supercharge bar right here. So I'm already at 100%, enough to use Cola Deep, but as you can see, I still have about almost a quarter and a bit worth of supercharge bar. If I take off Scrap the Soul Cloak, this is how much a different Scrap the Soul Cloak makes. So you can see now, if you look at my Call of Deep, that bar that's missing, about a quarter of a bar, that is the entire duration of what Super, uh, Soul Cloak does. So not only that does it extend my supercharge, um, maximum supercharge output, it also helps me regen faster and gives me the, uh, with it being ranked 200, I get the supercharge recovery 7% when I use Call of the Deep. So this is the effect with it off. When I put it on, now I have called the deep. So that's why I'm running Soul Cloak here. Just because in the melee build, you're going to be running it more often. The only difference is when I go to single target, you're going to see me run um, Soul Amplifier instead. Uh, that's the only difference. Uh, you're still running the Transformation. You're still running the Grim. And then for single target, you'd have the Heat Vision uh, because it revolves around that. So you're going to have uh, Soul Amplifier instead. That's the only change. So that's the four artifacts you need for water. Okay, so with the water loadout, uh, it is on the power intensive side. So you've got uh, Ebb being a 200 power cost, Depth Charge is 300, Shark is 2, you're clipping that with Bubble, which is a 300, and you've got the reduced power regen with Robot Sidekick, unless your Grim is at 200. So it is on the power intensive side, but the thing with water is that, for one, all the powers are max range, so you're doing the same damage in melee as you are for max range, which is an advantage. Um, and all the loadouts and rotations do similar damage. Like I can put in like tsunami strikes. I could do like high tide in, um, sorry, shark frenzy in high tide. I could do aqua lance in high tide. You know, it's just very similar damage from all the rotations. Uh, and this rotation, same thing. It does similar damage, but I've seen higher potential with this one to do uh, much greater damage. More so from the robot psychic melee and everything else. But you know, this is if you're going to be using melee loadout, you don't necessarily have to run, run so robot psychic. Sorry, in like a duo or an alert, we're using a little extra power. You can. It's not going to get you killed. Um, but I also have four generator mods in power, so I have the power pool to be able to justify it. So if you're looking for something to be a little bit higher damage in melee, this is going to be it. I do want to show a couple things with it. So we can um, do this here. Actually, I need Shark Frenzy. So we'll just do watch spouts here. So the first thing with Ebb, it's got a water construct as tap melee. So if I just do the regular combo, it just pulls the wave towards you. It, does, it also is a pull, so don't worry about that. If it go flying towards you, it doesn't matter. It's actually better for you because it's melee rotation. But if I tap melee, it pushes the water back. So regular power, regular power plus tap melee, and that's it there. Uh, the other thing as well to mention, uh, I need psychic out for this one. And it should be good standing here. As you just saw there, water spouts has a line of sight issue with an NPC. So water spout, no damage. If I'm using depth charge. Damage, Shark Frenzy, damage, Ebb, damage, Water Spouts, nothing. Water Spouts, nothing. So, this is the same issue with like Ice's Boulder and Fire's Meteor. Um, it has line of sight issues, not only with pets, but with NPCs. So, like Wonder Woman, you know, uh, Hawkman, whatever. Uh, a lot of raids nowadays have tons of NPCs. So, you don't want to be doing that and using this power ever. So, you should never, ever see any water DPS ever with water spouts in their rotation. It's a damage power that doesn't really do a lot of damage anyways. You shouldn't have it regardless. But, once again, zero damage. So, you just want to make sure you watch that. The other thing with water is to watch your positioning. And what I mean by that is, so if we go to the sparring targets here, you see these two targets are behind me. So if I do ebb, there's the two targets there. Same thing if I do you know, even flow, same thing, only two targets. Step charge, only two targets. 
Shark Frenzy is 360 degree AOE, so it's going to hit everything. So what I mean by watch your positioning is that if you change your positioning to uh, encompass ads always in front of you, same thing. So now, yeah, as you can see, I'm hitting almost everything. Shark Frenzy can hit everything. If I go max range, obviously, since the cone uh, starts out very small and then gets larger, same thing if you're max range. Obviously, I'm going to hit everything, so that's no problem. So just when this is more so in like hallway fights, uh, if you're doing like the hallways in like dark multiverse elite or dark multiverse in general, anything with hallways, you just want to make sure the ads are always in front of you and that you're just might being mindful of your positioning uh, so you're not right up in the face. If the tank's pulling the ads, you're not right up in one's face because obviously then you're going to hit a couple of ads and leave all the ads on the outside uh, undamaged. So they just uh, something to be mindful of watching your position. So in terms of the actual uh, loadout rotation, you're just doing ebb, tap melee, depth charge, clip with bubble. You get the extra free ticks from bubble. Not sure, did I show you the free ticks of bubble? I don't think I did yet. So let's let's wait for it to bubble to be on cooldown. So while I'm waiting for that, we go into bubble. Bubble, while inside DPS, your attacks have a chance to deal extra damage. So what that is is that if you pop bubble, you get one, two, three, and then that's it. So you get three ticks, free damage. You also have a shield to protect yourself while you're in melee damage. So it being able to give you some greater survivability, especially in a contact with no healer, like a duo and alert or open world. So it's nice from that aspect. And the nice thing about it too is that um, Eve is also a pull. So I, I'm not pulling them because my dom is only um, 900. If my dominance was high enough, it would pull them. So it actually works out in open world because you're going to pull the open world targets towards you so you can start doing your melee rotations. So it works out from that aspect. But uh, we can kind of touch on the actual rotation here and show you what the damage actually looks like with it. Okay, so you saw the gist of it there. Obviously, you saw how power intensive it was, but that's no different than some of my other rotations. Um, sorry, that 61k as a previous wasn't recorded, but uh, as you can see, it can reach the 60s. But uh, normally, it's um, around 59, 59, 51 was the lower part, so 30% on the crit chance, 57, 56. So it, it's it can be in the mid to high 50s, and also can be low 60s. But at the same time, that's also a 57k prec. Uh, so that's or 57k might sorry that's that's without using any of the augments uh, in terms of in content so in the content i'm usually around 61k base without any buffs or anything uh, because of the the augments so that turns that those 50s into 60s so once again comparing it to prec obviously it's gonna be lower than doomspin uh, just because what doomspin is but you know you're still getting 60ks uh easily out of water melee dps so it's still uh not by like upper epsilon at all in terms of my dps but uh it certainly doesn't suck either uh, that's what the main rotation is. So high power, but in a rating situation, it really is a non-factor. Okay, so with the single target loadout, uh, we do switch over to a high tide focus loadout. Uh, basically, high tide gives Aqualance a dot. So if we kind of go back into your Aqualance, regular power, you know, still crits 30k, but it's only a single hit. Now, if I'm in high tide, 
Use Aqua Lance. One, two, three, four, five, and a six second dot is added to it. So it's nice for a single target, just have that extra dot. You have the transformation that can proc on it as well. Uh, it's better because the high tide interaction with Shark Frenzy, the only other power that works off high tide in DPS dance, it gives it, a, it crits 100% of the time, which is completely redundant because we have the transformation card. So there's no point of having Shark Frenzy always critting because you're going to get most of the crits anyway from transformation. Uh, other than that, alas, if you are super speed, 100% use Tornado Pull. Tornado Pull has a ridiculously high crit magnitude on it, so uh, 17k normal. We'll just hit it again here. 17k. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> letting me down here right now. Okay. Well, that's, uh, there we go, 40k. Took a little bit ago we got there. So when it does crit, it crits amazingly. Uh, you know, that was 10k more than what um, Aqualance did. So, but if you're not super speed, you can't use that. So if you're, if you're not super speed, if you're acro fighter skimming, uh, just use Shark Frenzy. Uh, it's a 360 degree AOE power. Um, the nice thing about it as well is high tide, you can you can do the, the call a deep crit uh, trick, which I'll show later in the video in the supercharge section. Um, in terms of always making a crit, but there's really no other power you can substitute in. Um, you can substitute depth charge in, but then it uses a bit more power. Uh, Shark Frenzy is nice too, because if you're using it the first time, since there's no PI on it, you're going to get consistently good damage. So that's all it is there. So in terms of the spec, everything stays the exact same. Ideally, uh, artifacts, I'm running Soul Amplifier, so if you want to be uh, official, you should switch your chest mod from Penetrating Strikes uh, to Extended Supercharge. Uh, so where's my chest mod here? So uh, extend supercharge. So because I'm not running Soul Cloak, you do want to use that. Just so you have the supercharge back from Call of the Deep. It is annoying because you have to keep switching the chest mod. It's not like the penetrating strikes really does that much damage anyway. It's it's, it's consequential compared to the entire duration of a raid. Same like core strength. The core strength I'm pretty sure is bug still. But if you are doing a sing heavy single target build, then yeah, put in uh, extended supercharge because you do need soul amplifier, grim, and transformation for this build. So we can kind of get into the actual rotation here and, and show you what that actually looks like here. So you guys get the gist of Water Might single target there. Absolutely nothing to write home about. Uh, you're just as likely to get in like mid to high 20s as you would in like low 30s. Uh, just, literally, Water has no single target abilities. Uh, that's that's what the main issue is. That Heat Vision is an iconic power. It's there's nothing that's single target here. You know, Aqualance Dot that's still single target. Well, it's Torrent the Finisher is single target. That's it. Everything else is an AOE power. Water has no single target abilities. Uh, which is what the issue is for single target. There's n there's nothing to use. You know, it's a power that wasn't designed for single target. Uh, and it's probably, by comparison, I, I would say it had to be most likely the weakest might single target based power set. Because even electric, uh, with, when you get some nice crits on Tesla Blast, you can still be in the mid to high uh, 30s. Uh, water has that ability if you're using Tornado Pull instead of Shark Frenzy. So if you're using Tornado Pull, uh, you can be consistently in those mid-30s. You don't see really anything else than 30 anymore because Tornado Pull's base damage is so much higher. And if it crits, it always starts the rotation off nice. Because if Shark Frenzy doesn't crit, then you're getting like a 14k, 16k power, which is you know not the, the best for that rotation. But you can still reach low 30s. That's essentially what you're sitting at compared to Prec, which is going to be like in the friggin' 
you know, I think water prec, I was in like always mid to high 30s, and that's with like 31k base prec, which is nothing compared to what some players are running with on live server, so that should be always in the 40s. So it's just, water single target is like making the best of a bad situation. Uh, the other thing I want to remind you as well is if you're using high tide, don't clip out of shark uh, tsunami strikes early. Like say if I don't, I just did that. You see it uh, cost myself a couple of seconds, so it's not going to be able to be clipped. You just want to make sure you're doing the full animation of tsunami strikes to be able to get that on uh, off the right cooldown. So when you saw myself clipping shark frenzy with high tide each time. So that's essentially where it is. It's basically you're using Call the Deep to make up for some of your single target damage because of how strong it is, uh, which I'll show in the supercharge section. So it's just something to be mindful of that um, might water single target. It's just basically making the best out of a bad situation. That's, that's what it comes down to. So water ranged, I wasn't really going to cover this in, in the guide initially because water, like since water, every power is max range, um, it doesn't really matter what loadout you do, they're all going to be doing similar damage. Obviously, the melee version can be a little bit higher because you're using Robot Psychic, but you know, say so this is the single target rotation which you just saw previously, or if you can click on that link. Uh, but you know, even if I do the range rotation on single target, you know, I'm still sitting at the same 58k. So I'll just clipping in the actual range rotation. You know, it's still going to net me pretty much the same as anything else. We'll get a rotation where the PI is in full swing. Yeah, I'm still at like 49.50. 54. So say, you know, we'll just cancel out of this. Go back to my melee version. So even with Robot Sidekick at range. So if I do this rotation here. Yeah, obviously the rotation of saw before was doing slightly higher damage once again because I'm you know, don't worry about psychic and tsunami strikes is actually fairly decent for range you know 53 that got a little bit of a bonus from the uh, beginning with the uh, bottle city soldiers but you know it, it comes to the same thing so every rotation for range is very similar so whatever rotation you're already running is water you can run that you can run the melee rotations range and it'll drop off obviously from almost 60k down to like low 50s uh, the single target rotation, as you saw, is mid 50s with some blow. So, really, what it boils down to is it doesn't matter what rotation you use for range, all of water is range. So, it doesn't matter whatever you're doing it for melee or for single target, you can use just as well on range because A, there's no single target powers water has. They're all AoE, except Tornado Pull, which is iconic. Same thing with Heat Vision is iconic. So, it's just honestly, it doesn't matter what you run as water range, it's all going to be similar damage. Um, that's That's what it comes down to essentially with water. Okay, so we're on to the precision side of the guide. Now with precision, same spec as you would normally have with water. You can have weapons expert, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, your max and precision. And then uh, I put the rest in might and power. Uh, if you're running the cog, you would want to, as an artifact, the cog magnum, then you're gonna want to put some in health. But I put some in might just because we have uh, the shark frenzy and the bubble uh, might ticks as well. So in terms of how you spec everything else, you're going to want Robot Sidekick and Neo Venom Boost as Iconics. Super Speed, once again, uh, you don't necessarily have to worry about Dervish or Phase Dodge uh, because we're using uh, Bubble in the rotation. Some people may choose to want to use that or Tornado Pull or Phase Dodge. That's your choice, but it's not necessary. Uh, weapons, it's going to be depending on what you have. So it's going to be for... Uh, we're talking about melee right now, so it's going to be Doom Spin all the way down just the two handed mastery. You don't have to worry about taking any weapon mastery, just the two handed tree. In terms of the gear, uh, for melee, obviously it's going to be two handed. For a single target, it's going to be dual wield, but both are going to have blast adapter mods. Head mod is going to be supercharged Neo Venom Boost 3. Neck mod's always going to be Relentless Precision. Back mod's going to be Accelerated Bubble. Chest mod's going to be Penetrating Strikes. 
uh, leg mod doesn't apply anyway, not that the scale. Uh, near trinket, you're just going to have some kind of trinket yourself. DPS trinkets, orbital and supply, that's really your choice, what you want to run. In terms of uh, ability mods, you're going to want prec in both, but I'll just test server so I don't have elite gear anyway. But obviously your type A, if you had them in type B, would be prec. Face, neck, shoulders, hands are going to be max damage. Feet, once again, it's your choice, but uh, Tumbling Master is usually something I recommend. In terms of artifacts, you're going to have the Strategist card, the Transformation card, and the Venomous Dispenser. Now, we do have some other choices. Uh, technically, you could run the Grim if you really don't like the Strategist. The Strategist does, uh, there's been a lot of testing on this, not so much by myself, but by others, because they're primary prec DPS. Uh, and pretty much they've said the strategist always wins out over the Grim. The Grim is a bit more consistent on single target damage. Uh, you also set up the PI for Crush if you're using like Depth Charge or another ability. Shark Frenzy doesn't have a PI associated with it, so it doesn't matter. But really, the Grim would have to be almost 200 to justify it. I think it's 180. So if the Grim is at 180, you could justify it slightly if you're still leveling it, uh, just because you get the 5% prec at 180. To make up for some of the damage because strat is obviously going to lower your prec a bit because it's got no base prec but your potential for damage with the strategy card is a lot higher just with it always ticking on that uh gemma horus is not really recommended for water some people use it but i'm, I'm not going to tell you to level an artifact that's all completely situational and it's not good for single target uh it's just kind of something that right now doesn't fit in the meta so it's something not to worry about. Sparring AI, that's really only going to be beneficial in content where the boss or ads can be continually brock broken, like um, a survival mode. Other than that, like, yeah, it's got the really high base prec, highest base prec and 5% prec, but really you're just using it for stats. It doesn't give you a bonus at all, so there's no point. Uh, Gemini is not necessary as a prec DPS. So really, the go-to meta right now for precision artifacts are going to be the strategist, transformation, and the venomous dispenser. So it's always going to be venomous and, and transformation. That's good. That's a given. Uh, right now, the, the one that's the beneficial right now is the Strategist card, which is equally good for a lot of my rotation as well. In terms of augments, you're still going to have your adaptive augments, whichever for this DLC. Uh, for example, the Metal Part 2 DLC, it's the uh, what's Absorbix Gone. Probably butchering that pronunciation, but <laughs> whatever, whatever adaptive augment fits to this DLC is what you'd be wearing. And then obviously your origin augments are always going to be all precision. So the current level right now, at the time of this video, is, is rank 257. So that's what you'd be wearing in that. Which puts my base prec around uh, 3,125. So for water melee... We've got Shark Frenzy because it doesn't require the PI. It's just there for passive damage. That's all it is. It's just for the clip. Uh, we're using Bubble because if you see the damage roll inside Bubble, your attacks have an increased chance to deal extra damage. So if I hit Bubble right now, so we got one tick, we got two ticks, three ticks, and that's how it ends. So it's basically just three ticks of bonus damage. As well, being in melee range anyway with the Doom Spin, it provides a little bit of protection as well. It's not meant to be, you know, it's not going to save you or anything like that because your stats aren't going to be high enough to warrant it. But uh, it's a free clipping power, and it's a shield that provides three ticks of extra damage. And you also have a shield for a little bit of protection in melee range. So that's why you use that over, like a typical rotation, you just cancel everything with phase dodge. But uh, you have bubble there. So pressurize the weapon buff, and then we're using Riptide on the weapon buff. So you may say pressurize now lasts for 20 seconds. So even the 12 second cooldown, the weapon buff will continually persist through 12 seconds. So what I mean, uh, mean by that, sorry. So if we hit pressurize, go down to our weapon, pressurize, weapon DPS, 20 seconds. That means it, even if you miss the, the clip on that, or say if you miss a cooldown on any weapon buff power, uh, since it's 12 seconds, you still have 8 seconds to hit that and still gain the buff. So you may ask, why am I using pressurize? Well, water has the distinct advantage to being able to apply it to the venomous dispenser. So the venomous dispenser, as you can see, provides and increases your precision by 16% and reduces your base power by 10%, but it's for 6 seconds. Uh, so the weapon buff that you have your power lasts 20, but the weapon buff from what venomous dispenser only lasts 6 seconds. So by using Riptide on Pressurize, we can take advantage of that again, unlike other power sets. So if I do Pressurize there, and we should have Riptide it. So after, as you can see my prec here, 42, and drop to 38. So I'll do that again because that was uh, poor timing. So we'll wait for everything to expire so I can show you the differences. OK, 
Okay, so obviously the base prac 31, 125. If I clip both, now I'm at 42, 423. But you're going to see this drop after six seconds back to 38. 38, that's my weapon buff, and then 42, that's the venom suspensor. So by using pressurize on on Riptide, I can hit it again after six seconds. So you just kind of wait. You, you're going to see it in the rotation, but essentially you wait until Riptide's about halfway sec halfway through, then that's going to be six seconds. Now you're essentially hitting that again with the clip, obviously, and clipping the Shark Frenzy again. But that's why you use Riptide on Pressurize. Basically, you're just getting another free six seconds out of the Venom Suspenser, where other power sets can't because they're not going to be able to clip the weapon buff again because they're going to have to wait the 12 seconds. That's, a, that's essentially it. And then you just have Robot Psychic obviously out for some melee damage as well. But let's kind of get into the rotation here, and I'll show you. Okay, you guys get the gist of it there. Pretty much with Doomspin, it just entirely depends on how many hits you're getting per rotation. Uh, so that's why 10 seconds isn't completely viable, uh, just because it's going to not show the exact same ticks just because of all the Doomspin. So that's why you, you'll see like a parse here with 91, that's because I got 80 hits compared to one with like you know 83, which I got 86, uh, or another 82, that's 77. So obviously the more hits... Uh, they can hit on your parse, you're going to have higher damage. But as you can see, it's still the same thing. So it's still, you know, Doom Spin is always going to net you uh, low to mid 80s. Uh, when you have geese and crits and, and high hits, you're going to have 90s. Uh, obviously, this is not on a cog buff, not on a troll buff, not on like a flex buff. So that's why you can easily get in the hundreds, in the 100k parsers, which people are seeing. And then the low ends are even still like, you know, mid 70s. So as you can see there, same thing with the rotation, it's just that every uh, once the, rip, the Riptide reaches half, then you're using Pressurize again with Shark Frenzy, and then just going back in the rotation until all four are back off cooldown, and just kind of keep doing that. That's all it is. And then getting the extra few ticks from Bubble, that's all it is. So obviously some parses will be a little bit higher because you get the extra three ticks from Bubble, or depending on what the strategist crits. But that's essentially where you have with the melee rotation, which is going to be standard. It's every power set is going to be using Doom Spin, and just with a variant of what abilities it has. But uh, water has a little bit higher potential because we can reset the Venomous Dispenser cooldown.
Okay, flurry shot, you know, you don't have to sit here and do flurry shot for two minutes to understand what it's capable of. Uh, 35, 37, 37, 38, 39, uh, with a troll buff that turns instantly into 40s, uh, to low 40s. If you get the right crits, you can be mid 40s, uh, with a cog or even higher. And then if the if a might uh, if a might single target gets the troll buff, you get jack shit. Uh, so that's that's the discrepancy right there. But that, that's essentially the rotation there. It's, it's easy enough to time flurry shot with the second pressurize reset uh, after six seconds. It lines up pretty well, and then basically going into it. So you're still trying to maintain um, three or four ticks. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what mine was there because I'm obviously I'm still rusty with flurry shot. The only time I do flurry shot, I'm trying to become. Um, Prec only on the EU side, eventually get my artifacts up, so then I'll be able to do that more just not on the test server, but obviously you can tell from my form I'm still getting, um, you know, that high 30s right there. But that's essentially Flurry Shot. Uh, flurry Shot's been Flurry Shot for since <laughs> the Web Mastery revamp came out. <laughs> Nothing's changed with it. Uh, in terms of the rotation, it's, water all pretty much stays the same in terms of uh, rotation-wise and loadout-wise. So with water prec ranged or prec ranged in general, it's the exact same. I mean, it's the spec in terms of weapons, all you're changing is taking explosive shot mastery in addition to flurry shot mastery. There are some other options. You could run uh, bow, sorry, not bow, uh, brawling shuriken storm mastery is an option. Uh, Two-handed air storm is less damage, but it's an option as well. But you already have a dual wield for flurry shot, so you're just doing expulsion shot in addition. So it's still the same thing. Still the quad clip. And then with this one, we're resetting it after the second one, just cooldown wise. And then we're just waiting for Explosive Shot to all four come up. Which should be after this next one. So one, two, and then reset. And you get the idea, obviously. So in content, uh, you're going to dip a little bit depending on the parse just because uh, you may be waiting to hit that quad clip again. That's why some are going to be in the 60s, some are going to be in the 50s. You have the odd one that dips below in the 40s and just in case nothing crits. But in terms of this is what they're, uh, it's not totally reflective is in terms of parsing because in, in content, you're going to have Omega, Flex, Troll Buff, Claw Buff. Uh, so you're going to have all these other buffs. If someone's running the COG, you have that as well. Uh, so that's where Explosive Shot moves up into higher echelon where it's going to be, I've seen crits of like 100k some, some people have on Explosive Shot. So it's just, it's one of those things where it doesn't, it's not as reflective as when you would be actually raiding. And raiding it's going to be higher damage because you have all those extra prec buffs that you're going on in the background. Uh, where in Parsons you're not going to have that reflecting. So if I had, even if I had a troll buff on here, those are all mid 60s now uh, automatically in terms of having that extra buff. But that's prec range has stayed the same. I mean, prec range is like making the best of a bad situation <laughs> because there's no there's no true ranged uh, good prec rotation without kind of completely changing everything, completely changing artifacts. Uh, so it's basically explosive shot is making the best of a bad situation.
So there you just saw some quick tests done on the uh, Whirlpool and Call of the Deep Superchargers. It's one of those things where people would think that Whirlpool, because it's a 5,000 supercharge, you get more of them quicker, uh, they're going to be dealing more damage. But Call of the Deep is just on another level completely. Uh, you saw there on the eight targets, you're a million damage, so it takes three Whirlpools just to equal one Call of the Deep when you have the crits. On single target, same thing. It's almost three whirlpools to you know, beat out a Call of the Deep. As well, that's not even including uh, like supply drops, trinkets, uh, buff soders. So yes, that increases the whirlpool's damage, but also that does in a huge increase on Call of the Deep. Uh, you can easily get one mil crits on single target on the like the Hawkman second boss and in, in uh, into the Dark Multiverse Elite. Uh, it's just it, the same thing as well as what you have to think of is a since whirlpool is a dot if the ads are pulled out of the dot like say you, you pop whirlpool on, on a set in the hallway but the tank pulls them towards the next set all the damage is gone you know you have to be in the whirlpool to get be able to have that damage and the other thing as well is it's a 10 second dot so you put up a whirlpool on a set of ads you got all these prec tps doom spinning away and the ads are going to be dead before all of whirlpool's ticks finish ticking uh, where with Call of Deep, it, it's not just uh, a hard hitting damage for you, but it's also it's a counter towards the other DPS. So if you run up to a set of ads, all of a sudden you pop Call of Deep, that's a million damage right away, instantly off all those ads that those prep DPS can't do, or those other DPS that can't do. And if the ads are low enough health, Call of Deep's going to kill them anyway. Just not like Big Gun where they just explode and disappear, but uh, just the damage will be so high. So it, it's damage that those D other DPS can't do. Uh, so you're preventing them from doing damage. Same thing with orbital strikes. And the single target as well. It's, just, it's one of the best single target superchargers there is. So even though it's 60 seconds, even though it's 10,000 supercharged, you've got uh, group spamming like Nature Bug and Gemini, other things like that get to give you a supercharge. You still earn it at a fair pace uh, throughout the raid in general. You're still going to get like five or six over like a 25-minute raid. Uh, it's just the Call of Deep is going to be, you know, always the better option to take. Because um, even if it doesn't crit, it still does really high damage even without the high tide uh, shark frenzy crit you also have the transformation crit on it as well just the normal crit chance so it's just it's always going to be the better supercharger of the two to run okay so welcome to the water section of the guide now this is the one that's probably changed the most since the previous guide in terms of the uh, loadout but uh, before we touch on that let's kind of get into the spec here the spec has changes uh, has stayed the same uh, but we'll kind of get into that here so in terms of, we can touch on skill points first. Uh, so this is going to be a preference. Um, most likely, most of you are going to pick super power focus. I pick hybrid focus just because I get the extra 5% restoration and dominance. Uh, I'm going to take those for stats. I'm using my weapon enough that I still regen powers, uh, regen my power well enough. But if you're not using weapons, if you're just going to be like really spammy, like say electric, but water is not really the case with that. Uh, we don't have any power, so we strictly spam, and we're getting power back from um, Flood of the Power Supercharge, which I'll get into in the loadout section. So my personal preference is I always take hybrid for stats. Uh, if you feel that you're not using your weapon enough to generate uh, enough regen for yourself, take super powered. Uh, that's the only difference is just you're losing the stats. Uh, obviously, critical healing chance, critical healing magnitude you're going to max out. You're going to max out restoration. After this, uh, I put 100 in, in might and power just to give me that, that 10% uh, increase. I also run four power generator mods, so I usually have enough power so I can put the rest into dominance after that. Dominance has not too much of an impact yes it's a part of the healing formula yes it's a part of the shield formula but you can't have enough dom as a healer to make any meaningful difference uh it's going to be like less than you know 800 to a thousand extra damage it might absorb or something like that uh the healing formula it's not really described how much dominance it has effect is but it's very tiny it's not really noticeable in terms of the healing ranges uh it's just that i have enough skill points that i it's better than health for there's no point in me specking health as a, as a healer i don't need that um so I'd rather dominance will give me more benefit than it would health. That's the only difference. But uh, if you feel that 100 in power or basically a 10% increase in power is not enough for you, and you're feeling that you're running low on power all the time and having to take more than a soda, uh, then yes, just put more, put like 150 into mind power and then the rest into dom. Uh, that's your priority. But your main focus is uh, critical healing magnitude, chance, and restoration. That is your main focus as a healer. In terms of iconic powers, I'm taking no iconic powers as water. 
In terms of weapon, or sorry, I can touch on super speed first, but same thing, super speed. I'm not taking anything, I'm just taking the speed force. If you want the extra skill points, you can put that into restraint and knockback resistance. There's not too many cases where you're encased or rooted in raids anymore or knocked back. The stun is the most common one, which the super speed tree doesn't have. But if you have five skill points to spare, or six technically, uh, you can take these five. Uh, they'll get a little bit of power back, about 3,000 or so power. Uh, three or 4,000, which is enough for barely a, a priority. But that's, once again, that's your choice. It's not necessary. Uh, weapons... Once again, you could take the hand blasters out and do hand blaster solar flame. That's going to give you the most supercharged regen. I use do wheel just for a next little bit extra damage. Just makes it feel like I'm doing something as a healer and do flurry shot and explosive shot. Once again, that's not necessary. That doesn't have any extra bonus at all. In terms of your best regen for healer, it's going to be actually bow doing the regular flurry shot uh, and hand blasters uh, super, um, hand blaster solar flame. That's your highest power regen combos. I just use dual wheel just to make it seem like I'm actually doing something. So yes, you're going to have to dump in 20 skill points that because you got to max out the dual wheel. And then you're going to max out bow to take the full weapon mastery. Uh, obviously, if you don't have the skill points, don't worry about doing that. But it's just me doing, uh, just feeling I'm doing something. In terms of your gear spec, it's always going to be replenishing adapter. Don't take the, the healing one. Um, I can go into and show you what that actually is. Uh, it's going to be restorative adapter. Don't take restorative adapter. Always take power. The, the power you get back from this healing will be tenfold higher than you could actually the heal back. That you can hit a priority or any extra group heal because you have a replenishing adapter is going to be tenfold high stronger than anything you'll get from restorative adapter. So don't worry about that. Head mod for water is always going to be supercharged full of power. Neck mod is going to be focus restoration. Back mod is going to be accelerate a bubble. Chest mod's always going to be power efficiency. I mean, I shouldn't say always going to be power efficiency. If you're not running Soul Cloak, then yeah, you could run Extended Supercharge if you wanted for water, but I'm running Soul Cloak in this build. Legs doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. In terms of a loadout for your trinket, orbital supply, I've got the health, um, not health, the restoration trinket. I've got Creepy Jack just because it gives me a little bit of restoration. Not that 200 night resto doesn't really do much nowadays, but you also get a little heal back if your health blows, falls below 40, so... It's just a pet trinket that you have out there. You can run different options if you wanted. Uh, hand mod's going to be max damage. Foot mod's going to be tumbling master. And in terms of artifacts for water, uh, this basically falls into um, two different options. It all depends what you want to do. I don't have the orb as a healer. Um, I just transition from trolling, DPSing to healing. So I don't have, uh, ideally, I'd want a page of destiny and an orb. I will eventually get that for when I do Sork. But. If I was going to heal properly with water, I would take the orb, the orb of Orion. Uh, if you already have that, great. Uh, that works well with water because you're getting um, power back with flooded power. So you have that power to maintain hitting that priority. Uh, but Scrap of Soul Cloak and Gemini are going to be important for water because you want to make sure you're always in uh, having access to that flooded power supercharge to reset those cooldowns, which I'll show in, in the loadout rotation. But ideally, you'd want to have the orb so the orb soul cloak and gemini will be your, your ideal three um you're not really using mending wave that's the thing so with page of destiny requires the group heal which is mending wave even before i wasn't using mending wave uh before i was using either blessing of the depths uh, which is the eight man heal or you're doing like a proper like the full shield rotation with tempest guard you know mending wave i'd only use on like you know duos or alerts if i was healing i've never used mending wave in raids um so if you're stuck using that power because you have to take Page of Destiny, it's not as ideal. You certainly can get away with it. And in that case, if you did want to run the Page of Destiny, I would run uh, Page of Destiny Orb and just take out Gemini and then have the Soul Cloak for the extra supercharge regen and not worry about the Gemini. Because the Gemini you're not using really for heals. It's just for the supercharge back to maintain it. So you just, you'd have less um, full out of powers, but you have more Page of Destiny procs. In terms of, it, I hear manacles a lot for water as well for the shield cooldown. The shield rotation has changed a lot. That's why I'm going to, uh, when I eventually get into that, tell you not to run Tempest Guard. Uh, it's just, there's so many mechanics now that have shield penetration. So there's, having uh, Bubble and Tempest Guard faster is not necessary. Um, I'm not sure if that also works on the supercharge flood power is it considered a shield. Yeah, so technically you'd have, you'd have a flood of power a little bit faster as well. It's just, it's not necessary. Uh, in the past, I know healer, water heals ran manacles just for the cooldown reduction, but it's it's not necessary anymore. Um, you're better off with something that's a pure heal build. So I'm running the strategist just to run it. Um, 
but I would, if you're water healing or want to get into water healing, 100% take the orb. Uh, that is the one you want to run. So now we can touch on loadouts. There's really, there's there's two loadouts I'm going to show you. Um, one kind of changes depending on the content. So this is my main one that I'm going to be using. This is the one that I've done for Soul Healing DME, Peace Eddy, uh, all the new content. This is the one that I found the most success and utility with. Uh, if I'm running, so basically Soothing Mess is obviously going to be your priority heal. Blessing the Depths is your eight-man heal. Uh, don't worry about High Tide or anything like that. Uh, Bubbles is going to be the shield, Solace of the Seas, Riptide, and Flood of Power Supercharge. If I'm running the alert or anything lower, then yes. You, you, there's Obviously, there's no point of an eight-man heal in a six-second cooldown in an alert. Then take, you take many Wave because it's only the four-man heal. But that's the only substitution that I make. Uh, in raids, I'm always using uh, Blessing of the Depths. And then we'll jump to Doom Metropolis to touch on the actual rotations. But the the other one that's the more cliche one is basically you just take out Blessing of the Depths and you put in Tempest Guard. So this one you have two shields. You have Bubble, Tempest Guard, and then uh, Solace is basically your heal over time. So then you're, easy, you're either using Riptide on Bubble or Riptide on Tempest Guard. Flood of Power to reset the cooldowns. Uh, so it's, that's the more that's the one you saw more in SM. I was running the double heals or double shields and then just the having solace which is a very strong heal over time um as that but t the tempest guard has moved it's the weakest shield by far like the widest margin is the weakest shield uh it's barely over like some of the troll shields and there's so much content that has shield penetration it's just it's not beneficial also it's not 100 percent absorption you'll still take a tiny bit of damage through that i think it covers up to 80 or 90 percent of it but it's not 100 percent absorption like bubble will so you're going to take damage through which i'll show it in once we get to do metropolis but uh, that's essentially the two rotations or two loadouts you'd have this loadout or you'd have the one uh, that gives you a better healing chance over tempest guard so let's jump to do metropolis and let's kind of show these rotations in action okay so we're gonna do metropolis here but to uh, take damage from the spore cloud here uh, now, essentially what this rotation revolves around is resetting Solace of the Seals with Riptide. Uh, so we'll kind of get into the gist of it here. This is not what you always want to have out. You always wanted to have it on there. So if I do Solace just regular, then Riptide, and then Solace again. So now I have two Solace of the Seas ticking at the same time, overlapping. And then we'll, uh, we'll get down to when the cooldowns reset. And then I can hit, you know, Blessing the Depths there and get a nice little E-Man heal. But, so now we're off cooldown. Let's just get back up to full. So now the concept here with using Flood of Power to reset uh, cooldowns. So I'm going to do Solace, Riptide, Solace, Flood of Power, Solace, Riptide, and Solace. So now I have four Solaces of the Seas stacking all at the same time. So all four of these are stacking for the entire group. And I also have the Flood of Power itself. Uh, so that didn't uh, didn't work as ideal because of the damage. Uh, the thing with Flood of Power, the reason why it's a personal shield, this is uh, not an eight-man shield, it's a personal shield, but Flood of Power is the strongest heal shield there is out of any of the healer power sets except like uh, Susserl's uh, Concentrated Ground, which is technically not a shield, it's just damage reduction. But Flood of Power, if you guys remember uh, the old Group transducer from Electric, if you remember how strong Group transducer was before the Supercharge changes, that's how strong Flood of Power is right now. In terms of the base shield multiplier, if you've seen my other uh, shield testing videos, I have another one coming out uh, probably in a week or so. I just have to put all the footage together. But uh, if you guys remember running raids and, and how strong that healer supercharge was from Electric, that's how Flood of Power is right now. And it's a 5,000 power cost, 30 second cooldown. Uh, because it, it didn't get affected by the changes because it's technically a DPS shield. Uh, so it's uh, that's why it's very powerful. Uh, so it's, think of it... Um, think of it like the easy way to explain this is like uh, in Into the Dark Multiverse Elite, Final Boss, you got Barbatos, you got the sub-bosses, you got those pulse beams uh, every so often. So you can go right in the middle, you know, drop these two, Flood of Power, you know, drop it again. So now you're hitting... All these heal over times, four times stacking on top of each other, are hitting the tanks on both sides, the Barbatos tank and the sub-boss tanks. You're hitting the players. You're getting heals from NPCs. You know, nothing can out-heal a water healer in that final boss. And the same thing. 12 seconds later, you have another two up. So it's basically, you can keep that rotation of always cycling in Solace of the Seas for all that healing over time. And on top of that, you have, you know, your priority. You have an eight-man heal. So even if everything goes on cooldown, so everything's on cooldown, follow the power, boom. Everything's reset. You know, you can clip into Solace. I screwed up Riptide there, but 
you get the picture. Uh, so that's that's the advantage of having a lot of power. So it's you can you can dump all the heals in your loadout, have everything on cooldown, and that's still not enough. The group is still dying. You can instantly hit flood of power. Not only do you have a strong personal shield on yourself, so if the healer doesn't die, then you can keep healing the group. So there's a lot of situations like say say um, your Phoenix Cannon Elite getting charged by Lady Blackhawk, and you can't block in time. You can hit a flood of the power. You you're now shielded, so you're going to survive that charge. And you have your entire cooldown reset because of the charge. Everyone's gonna have roll wins on them. Now you can max out all your heals in that situation. Hit, you know, hit blessing of depths. Have an eight man heal. You can put a bubble on the tank so, or the weakest player. You know, have you know another double heal over times out. All because you have that shield and the entire cooldown was reset. So that's the that's the rotation there. So the only difference is really it's the same rotation. You're just mixing tempest guard. This is more, I would say, more beneficial for older content, older tier content, because at that point, the shield is still going to be helpful. Like, you can still pop Tempest Guard. You can still uh, see I'm taking damage through it. It's still absorbing 10k, 12k, uh, but I'm also taking uh, 6k through it, where in terms of I hit Bubble, Bubble's 100% absorption. So until the Bubble uh, base shield multiplier has been reached, I'm going to take max damage, no damage through it. So that's, that's the difference between Tempest Guard and Bubble. But it, it, a rotation like this still works. Uh, you can still use, you know, Tempest Guard, Riptide and Tempest Guard. So you have two eight-man shields out. And then once someone get, one that gets that through, you can go into Bubble. And then you just keep Solace out just for the main heal and have it every 12 seconds. So I'm going to move so Doomsday doesn't wreck me. But that's, that's essentially the way you want to treat water healing. Uh, it is situational, like the same thing, in, you, it, but it's just you always, you may find yourself using Riptide on Bubble again uh, just to have that extra protection, but most of the time, or nine times out of ten, I was always resetting um, Solace of the Seas with Riptide. So even if it's like you know, Hawkman's second boss, you go to the middle, you drop all your Solace pools, that's going to hit people healing behind, um, you know, because it's got a great range. Solace Seal's range is, is outside... Um, so you see here, the main pool here, that's not the actual range. The actual range of the healing is out uh, to the edge here. So you can see, you know, if I'm a healer popping that and you're a player this far away, even like a little bit farther, I think, is the actual one. But you're still getting heals in this entire radius. And then if you want to even get tricky a bit, you can, you know, Riptide again, move it. So then you got double wide pools like this. So you cover wider range. The only thing you have to make be careful of, which is what, it's not water's fault, it's the animation's fault. But I'll show you here. So if you double jump in the air, summon it. So now I've got a Solace above my head. And if I summon another Solace here, if you're trying to DPS, you've, you've got your line of sight kind of screwed up uh, by having the extra Solace. So that's what you want to watch out for in terms of that. Um, make sure you're not jumping, you know, ridiculously. Making sure you summon your Solace as he is on the ground. And then you don't have to worry about running into those line of sight issues uh, with DPS and to annoy them. Uh, because, like I said, there's a lot of mechanics they also put on the ground, like the tornadoes and Zui, like the uh, drowned dark pools in the alert and in the raid. So obviously you don't want to cover them with Solace of the Seas, but uh, they're getting better with that. But it's just an animation issue, but it's just something you have to be mindful of. But uh, that's essentially water healing right there.